this is why I'm removing my radio. You can see the lines here. And also you can't see is what happens. The backlight just stays on even though the truck is, is off and uh, it's been draining my battery. Um, it doesn't come on. I can't access the menus anymore. Um, and uh, you know, backup camera doesn't work. So this thing is done. As you can see, I've partially disassembled it already, getting ready for the upgrade. So I've, I've just removed this radio. Um, the truck was off. And this thing is hot. Yeah, that's not a good thing. That means uh, the heat means it's dissipating power, means it's using your battery, which is exactly why if I left my truck sitting for 24 hours or longer, this thing would be dead and I'd need to jump it or recharge the battery. It's not good. right side up yes it appears to be all right next one let me get the usb this one's a little tricky so this is also oriented a different way same with this you yeah, like have to come around a weird way to get this one i don't like this at all let's change the orientation here if we can this one or face on and then we need to get ready for the other wiring because there's other wiring that needs to hook up to different things like the fan controller okay so there are the faces removed that's our old one for our old radio idiot child <laughs> that leaves garbage in the back seat child. Even uh, things over there. so this is the new one replaces it Where's it's the got new, one? new it's right here it's got new controls and it's also larger right you can see it's physically larger for the new touch screen so it just drops in And then we need to screw everything back in without snapping anything because the plastic is delicate. <laughs> this might be new, but the rest of the truck is 10 years old, right? So what happens with plastic is after time, it uh, some of the solvents that are in the plastic, they dry out and the plastic becomes brittle. And that's why it's so easy to, to just break old plastic parts especially in a hot environment like Arizona, right? There's stuff that is in the plastic that makes it soft and it just evaporates or otherwise leaches out over time. And I'm trying not to over tighten these and not under tighten them at the same time. So there's the logo on it as well as the company I bought this from. What they do is effectively they jailbreak the uh, the uh, other, they're the displays from other other models. In this case, this is a very basic model. It wasn't the SL or the Tradesman, it's the SLT, which was just barely up from the Tradesman. Uh, so a few upgrades that needed to happen with this truck. This is one of them, should have done it a long time ago, but that's okay. The kits have actually gotten better since then. 
anyway, so I don't feel too bad about that. All right, so almost the last one here. We have no extra parts and no empty screw holes. So both of those conditions are good. There we go. Okay, we're gonna set this aside for a minute because we need to run some new wiring for the new climate control parts. And then we're gonna take apart the other parts of the dash. There we go. Man, it's freaking gross in here. That's the way it is. Oh, this part I'm not a fan of. Our metal clips come out when they're supposed to. This one did not. Hmm. That actually goes on the other piece. So I need to get access to the resistor, which is under here. And I don't like stressing on these plastic clips, but there's not much I can do about that. Okay, that looks pretty gross. Uh, this is what they call the resistor. Uh, I never actually seen the inside of one, but um, basically it's a big heat sink. And then what looks like is the metal resist, some sort of metal here. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure how that works. I'm sure there's probably different resistance depending on where I, where I touch here. Oh, yeah, it's gotta be the ground for the, the case. Anyway, um, this determines the fan speed. There's four four options, right? There's off plus three. I think that's how that works, uh, or maybe not. So you see low, M, M, H, low, medium, medium, high. So there's two settings that are in the middle, and that's that's reflected on my, my dash cluster, whereas the new one has seven speeds. The new one has a much different uh, wiring uh, connection, um, and also, there's a humongous heat sink on there by comparison to the old one. All right, let's see if we can put that in. I believe this was mounted in like this. I think that only goes in like this. It can't go like this. And that is correct. It only goes in one way. All right. All right. You, you, you can't see it that way. You need to get underneath. It's under here, which makes it super fun. I don't know if it's recording anymore or not, but super easy to get to, right? I waited like four how many months? Like four months or something like that. You're waiting for it? Yeah, because apparently there was a global shortage on HVAC modules, which is kind of stupid. I don't know why the parts planners didn't like think, oh yeah, we better source some new suppliers. Eh, anyway, yeah, it just slides in. I, I kind of don't like the screw being here. I'm gonna figure out a way to tighten that. I think it's eight millimeter and I'll get a, I'll get a wrench. This is effectively holding this onto the, the panel here and I don't like that being loose, especially here in Arizona. And you know, we go down the trails all the time. The last thing we need is more loose stuff inside the truck making noise. So, I'm going to go get a wrench. Maybe. Or maybe this is just teasing me. Yeah. Just 
So I can do it in like the hardest way possible. I can't get a screwdriver on it because it's just so brilliantly placed in here that, well, you know, I guess what I can do is loosen this up a little bit, slide this up, tighten this a little bit. Come on, really? You're not even gonna play play nice with me. As an engineer, sometimes I don't like other engineers. Whoever did this, you're not my favorite person. Now that's not going anywhere. Okay, fine. I'll put all this stuff back together. Explain it. Explain something. So I had to rewatch the, the video from the manufacturer. I had I had the wrong end in here. Uh, that's where this connector, I couldn't figure out where it went to on the other side. I'm like, what the hell? What am I missing? Turns out I just had the wrong end, end through. So now I'm just trying to try to route the cables in as best as I can into the side here. Because it'll make a much neater install if I can put them through here. And it looks like it doesn't just doesn't want to cooperate. There it is. It's turned here. Okay. Just had it in my hands. There's light coming out here. Yes, dear. Quiet. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm teasing you. It's not done yet. It did, it did power on momentarily um, when I unlocked the truck, and that's normal. It does that. All right, there we go. I got both connectors through. I'm pretty sure we have both connectors through now. This one doesn't want to go in. There we go. I got it. It just, it's, I think, it just caught behind a wire. There you go. Okay. I just caught behind something. That's all. Wire that I couldn't figure out what was going on here. That could actually come up here. Wire, wire gets plugged in down here, but unfortunately I don't have a whole lot of slack here. This isn't, this isn't very nice. And that's it. Like that wiring harness isn't giving me anything. All right. I don't like that. We'll make it neat. All right. Let's pull that off. Just pop it right off. It'll come right off. I hate these assholes in this video sometimes. Hopefully, loosen this up. So what'll happen is I have to take a wire out of here. And in order to get that wire out, I have to loosen the retainer and then
she just doesn't want to play nice. There it goes. Okay. This is going to go in and take its place. I heard it snap in. Okay. So. That's annoying. These freaking plastic clips break easily. I'll go get some super glue to fix that. It's not exactly fixing it, but it won't rattle around on it. So I'm not a fan of exposed wires, so I'm gonna heat shrink it and then I'm gonna put some tape on it. All right, so that's adequate. We just don't want it rattling around and making contact with stuff. I'm gonna wrap it just as an overabundance of caution. I don't like don't like the idea of having loose wiring. I'm probably gonna regret this later, but oh well. Alright, that should be enough. Just finish up here. Alright, so reconnect. Hopefully everything goes in. Yep, seems like it. We're gonna remount this. I don't like how tight that wiring is. Oh, that's just ugly. Well, I'm just connecting it for the for the manufacturer's instructions. That's the pass through. That's no longer used. Or, sorry. That's joining these two. I'm gonna put some tape around this one. This one's no longer going to be used anymore. And then we're going to kind of hide things in, in behind the dash as much as we can here so it doesn't rattle. I hate rattling noises. And you know how it is here, right? Like in the, you go down a dirt, a rocky dirt road and everything just makes all kinds of noise. It's so annoying. So we'll wrap that up. Hopefully. It'll be quiet. We shall see. All right, so that'll get pushed back here, out of the way. And now, now here's all of our connectors for the uh, for the panel for the new panel. Yeah. There's one little piece I want to tie up a little Hopefully better back here. Work. Well, we'll find out in a minute because we're gonna power it on just as soon as we. Uh, let me finish this install. There we go. That's that clip. Here's this one. This one. And then this one. So that should be all of our connectors. Before we put this on, we're going to remove this. I am going to do something here. So this is not okay for that to be in the, in the way. All right, so very gently push it back into place. And it sounds like everything latched in. Okay. Anti-theft code. All right. Our family starting at so let's, let's, starting at Check climate control. Yeah, we're going to change some stuff here. Uh, not my most favorite song here, but um, audio. Make sure all the speakers work, right? Where's my phone? Is it down there somewhere? Oh, it's right behind you. Yeah, we gotta button everything up and make it, make it nice again. Nice and neat again.
<laughs> so th this is a this is what they call an OEM radio. Um, it, it was made for Chrysler products. Like I think I think that radio is actually for like uh, cars. Um, so those are usually expensive because they're designed to last a long time. So the OEM radios are generally a lot more expensive than aftermarket, and that is an OEM, and that costs about eighteen hundred dollars for this whole kit. Um, it's kind of nice to have because I can get other upgrades that work with this radio, like the uh, buttons underneath the uh, steering wheel and uh, some other upgrades, which may be at one point, but not right now. I'm happy with this because we didn't have a radio before. Now we have a radio, but we had a radio. It just stopped working, right? And it was draining our battery because the backlight would stay on. So now that everything's put, oh, I got to put the glove box in. I guess could have just emptied it out before I started this, but no, that would have been too easy. Alright, so this is actually kind of a pain in the butt. What this is, is it's the uh, return. Uh, oh, something's not in. There we go. Anytime, I basically have a third.